Welcome back to the channel. Today we're diving into Microsoft's latest open source AI models and their Pi 3.5 series. These models are built for both commercial and scientific use, offering multilingual capabilities with impressive reasoning power. Whether you're working on a small scale project or need a more advanced model, there's something for everyone in this release. Let's break down the three key models in this series. The smallest, Pi 3.5 Mini Instruct with 3.8 billion parameters is perfect for scenarios where computing power is limited but performance still matters. If you need more power, the Mixture of Experts Instruct model packs a whopping 60.8 billion parameters. Although only 6.6 .6 billion are active at any one time, giving you power when you need it without using excessive resources. And for a truly versatile model, the Vision Instruct model can process both text and images at the GPT-40 level. Now let's walk through how you can get access to these Pi 3.5 models. It all starts with GitHub. Head over to GitHub and search for a repository named Pi 3 Cookbook. This repository is your one-stop shop for everything related to the Pi family models. Once inside the repository, you'll want to navigate to the markdown files and look for section 8, which contains updates specifically about the Pi 3.5 models. As you scroll down to the bottom of the section, you'll find a link that takes you directly to the Hugging Face landing page. Here's where you'll find all the available Pi models, including previous versions and of course the three we've been focusing on, Mini Instruct, Mixture of Experts, and Vision. To get one of these models, simply select the one you want and use Git to clone it in your local machine. Now that you got the model on your machine, you can use the Python sample file provided in the repository to start interacting with the model right away. Alternatively, if you're planning to use the model in a .NET environment, you might want to convert it to Onyx format. For those who aren't familiar with Onyx, or Open Neural Network Exchange, is an open format used to represent machine learning models. It allows models to be used across different frameworks, meaning once your Pi 3.5 model is in Onyx format, you can easily integrate it in your .NET applications. There are plenty of .NET libraries available for working with Onyx models, making it a flexible option for developers. Now that we've got our Pi models ready, the next step would normally be to convert it to Onyx format. But don't worry, we've already done that for you. You can find the Pi 3.5 Instruct Onyx models on our Hugging Face page. The link will be provided in the description below. The Onyx Runtime Generate API is part of the Onyx Runtime Gen AI project, an open source tool developed by Microsoft specifically for AI model inference. It supports a variety of programming languages like Python, C Sharp, C, C++, and Java. Currently, it's optimized for models such as Gemma, Llama-based models, Mistral, Pi, and Quinn. For this example, we'll be working with the Pi 3.5 Instruct Onyx model, targeting the CPU instead of GPU. This will allow us to demonstrate the power of these compact models even in CPU-bound scenarios. And the best part, it can also run on your mobile devices. This makes it incredibly versatile for a range of use cases from desktop application to mobile platforms without requiring heavy computational resources. Now that we have our model ready, let's jump into a simple console application. We've added the latest Microsoft.ml.onyx runtime gen AI NuGet package, targeting version 0.40. This package targets the CPU, which is perfect for users who don't have access to high-end performance GPUs or simply want to run the model efficiently on standard hardware. If you want to work with the GPU and you have an NVIDIA graphic card, you can reference the CUDA version of the package. But if you're working with a broader range of hardware, DirectML is a great alternative. It provides GPU exploration for machine learning tasks across a wide range of DirectX 12 capable GPUs, including those from AMD, Intel, Nvidia, and Qualcomm. Next, we add our using statement to reference the NuGet package in the project. We've already downloaded the CPU version of the Pi 3.5 Instruct model, so now it's time to load the model and see it in action. Once the model is loaded, we have two options for how to present the results to the user. Either we can stream the model's response or return it in one big chunk. 
as you can see the model is processing and streaming its response directly to the console while this is happening it is important to note that the CPU is handling the inference here you'll notice that the GPU is not being used for inference in this case our GPU is dedicated to recording the screen but everything related to the model inference is handled by the CPU now let's dive into function calling while large language models LLMs or SLMs like Pi 3.5 instruct are incredibly powerful for generating text and answering questions they can not execute code on their own their inference engines designed to interpret and respond to prompts however we can make these models even more interactive by combining them with function calling function calling allows us to define specific tasks that the model can help execute during inference here's how it works first we ask the LLM if the user's question requires a function to be called for example if the user asks for a calculation or want real-time data from an external system we pass the structure of the function to the LLM the LLM then tries to map the user's question to the function extracting any necessary entities and arguments now let's focus on how the Pi family models handle function calling if you take a close look at the tasks these models are capable of you'll notice they don't natively support function calling this is because the models were not trained on the data that directly supports generating results for executing code or calling functions so the question is how can we still use these models for function calling the key here lies in how we structure our models response although the model can directly call functions we can guide it to output structured data that we can use for our function calling logic for example if we ask a question like describe the seasons and also include the months provide your response in JSON the model will attempt to format its answer accordingly even though it's not perfect it will do its best to output a structured JSON format once we have the structure output we can modify it to follow a specific schema for instance we can further guide the model by asking describe the seasons and also include the months provide your response in a JSON and follow this schema as you can see by specifying the schema we have more control over the model's output the Pi model will now attempt to format its response based on the structure we provided giving us more predictable and usable data this process of controlling the output gives us the ability to use the structured data in our applications and it's also a great way to bridge the gap of function calling now that we have a structured output we can design a prompt that instructs the model on how to map the user's question to a specific function extracting entities and parameters as needed by carefully crafting these prompts you can instruct the model to output responses in a structured format that aligns with your function calling schema from there you can write code that takes the structured response maps it to your functions and executes the appropriate logic now let's take a look at function calling in action for this demonstration we've updated our project with a few prompts and added supporting code to execute functions on the back end the scenario here is a customer service chat designed to help customers refund tickets we've created three core functions to handle customer interaction the first function is responsible for getting users email and returning a list of tickets associated with that email once we have the email we can list all the tickets the customer has purchased the next function takes the ticket ID as a parameter and process a refund so if the customer says something like I want to refund my ticket ID 12345 the system will map this request to this function extract the ticket ID from their users query and trigger the refund process the final function handles situations where the customer asks a question that the customer chat can map to a specific function in that case the request is directed to a function providing instructions or you can configure to do something else by using structured prompts and function calling we're able to map customer queries to predefined functions and automatically execute actions like refunds or pass the request to a function providing instructions if needed now let's take a look at how this works so we set up three breakpoints to show you when the functions are executed let's go ahead and start our hello pi 3.5 one thing to note here is that the model used is the quantized version for the CPU so this is a very small model about around two and a half and three gigs so now let's go ahead and test these three functions first we're going to test the function where there's no mapping so we'll ask a question and this should now trigger our function 
where we provide instructions. As you can see, we now have executed our no mapping because the question was not mapped properly to the customer service requests. Our next question is going to be providing our email address to get a list of ticket IDs. So as you can see, our email was extracted and passed to the function, and now we're going to get the order history. Next, we're going to initiate the refund process. And now we've initiated the final refund process. Now let's take a look at how the code works. Here we are in our customer service chat, and when the user enters their query, we first try to get the intent and map it to a corresponding function. This is how we can identify the relevant method and then extract the necessary entities to pass as parameters by calling the function using reflection. Now let's go ahead and run our program and step through the code. Every time a user enters a query, we begin by identifying the intent. To do this, we load our intent prompt template this template helps us match the user's query to an intent that corresponds with a function in our system. We have three functions that participate in function calling, and each of these functions has attributes describing what the function does, including the intent that it can handle. This makes it easier to map our queries to the appropriate function. Once we retrieve the function attributes, we iterate through all the functions and extract their intent. These intents are crucial because they help us structure our prompt to ask the Pi model for the intent matching. Next, we take our intent prompt template and replace it with extracted intent in the user's query. This structured prompt will guide the Pi model to understand the user's intent and map it to one of the predefined functions. Once the prompt is prepared, we pass it to our Pi model to give the user's intent. The model analyzes the prompt and helps us identify the best match for the function the user is requesting. By structuring the user's query and combining it with our predefined intent, the Pi model can efficiently map the query to the correct function. This is how we dynamically identify and call the correct function based on the user's input. Once we map the user's query to appropriate function, we need to pull out the necessary entities from the query. These entities, like the email in this example, are then passed as parameters to the function, and then we can map those entities as parameters using reflection. For this example, we've just shown you one scenario and how you can map a user's query to a function. Now let's take a look at how you could do it with the LLM extracting the information and mapping the function for us. Now let's explore how we can get the LLM to map a user's query to a function and extract its entities. The first step is to load all three functions by reading the attributes we've added to them. Once the functions are loaded, we serialize their schema into a JSON string format. Next, we load our function prompt template. And similar to the previous step, we replace the placeholders in the template with the serialized schema and the user's query. Now that we have prepared the prompt, we can send it to the Pi model to process. The results we get back from the Pi model are structured based on our prompt, containing logical tags. Inside the response, we receive a JSON string that represents the function we need to call, along with the entities mapped to the function's parameters. We'll use a regular expression to extract this function from the response. After that, we convert the JSON into a C-sharp object. Using reflection, we locate the appropriate method to call and then invoke it with the extracted parameters. It is important to note that in this example, we're using the Pi model quantized for the CPU. So if you run it locally, it may be slower. For a more efficient and powerful solution, you can load the PIM 3.5 and struct model using CUDA or DirectML for GPU acceleration. That wraps up our deep dive into function calling with the PI 3.5 models. We explored how to map a user's query to functions, extract entities, and execute dynamic code using the model's output. By combining function calling with the power of LLMs, We've unlocked a lot of possibilities for building intelligent interactive systems. Remember, while the Pi model may not natively support function calling, with its structured prompts and a bit of creativity, you can build a robust solution that fits your needs.
whether you're running on a CPU or taking advantage of CUDA or DirectML for a GPU acceleration, these models are flexible and capable of handling complex tasks. Thank you for following along. If you found this helpful, don't forget to like and subscribe. Hit that notification bell for more tutorials on AI, machine learning, and development tips. Until next time, happy coding.